says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. May God bless you, and I hope this is a great day for you with Christ. Welcome to Today with Christ. We're glad that you joined us for the broadcast today. And I hope you'll tell others about Today with Christ and invite them to watch as well. And today we're going to talk about how to cope with fear. Mm -hmm. And what do we do when we face those really, really scary situations in our own lives? And today we have a special guest who will be joining us in a few minutes, uh, Pastor uh, Bernie Cagle, who's pastor of the Omega Baptist Church in White Pine, Tennessee. And he's Mm -hmm. been through some experiences in the last couple of years, which Mm -hmm. have uh, really, really been difficult. But at the same time, he has come through them uh, Mm -hmm. victoriously. And I think you'll enjoy watching that. Uh, First, we're going to watch a video from Dr. J. Harold Smith that touches on this topic of fear Mm -hmm. and how we deal with it as Christians. Let us turn here in the Word of God to another wonderful and a precious promise. This promise is found over in Job chapter 11 and verse 9, where the Word of God declares, Also thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. You know we are living in a day when people are afraid. We are living in a frustrated world. I believe with all of my heart and with all of my soul this promise. I believe that if you will put your trust in the Lord, If you will surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and give him your all, I believe that you can lie down, and as the word says, and none shall make thee afraid. You know, as I travel up and down this countryside, and as I talk to this general or this great uh, man of war, they tell me about the fearsome, awesome instruments of warfare that we have manufactured and that man has discovered in these last few years. And many of these men say, Preacher, if the world and if the people of the United States knew only, if they just knew the horror of some of these weapons, they'd never be able to lie down at night and sleep in peace. I said, I would, because I know the Lord Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. And you know, neighbor, I firmly believe this with all of my heart. I believe that you can lie down at night without fear. You can walk the streets of our city without fear. You can drive your car up and down the highways without fear. If you really have the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Leaning upon this promise where the Word of God says that we shall lie down and none shall make thee afraid. That means all of the dictators. That means all of the powerful forces that be today. I wonder if fear fills your heart. Most of us, when we lie down at night, we have this lock or that lock, or we have a gun there by the side of our bed, and we live in that constant fear. Many of us are afraid to lie down at night. We are afraid that we'll be robbed. One of the dearest friends that I have in this city was recently robbed. He woke up in the middle of the night with a man standing by his bedside with a gun pointed his head, and this man's wife had some beautiful jewelry. And he said to her, he said, take those rings off your finger. He said, open up your jewelry box and give me all of the diamonds, all of the necklaces that you have. And this man said to me, preacher, I want to tell you that was the most horrible, fearsome, awesome experience that I've ever passed through. And you know, neighbor, I imagine it would be a terrible and an awful thing to wake up in the middle of the night with a man standing by your bedside with a gun pointed at your head. But isn't it wonderful that in the Lord we can lie down and the Bible declares we can lie down without any real personal fear. So if fear is gripping your heart, And if fear has laid hold upon you, remember this wonderful and marvelous promise that we've had the privilege of studying on this little coffee break. Now, neighbor, we'd be happy to hear from all of you, uh, every one of you that listen to these programs. Are they a blessing to your heart? 
if they are really a blessing to your heart, would you take just a moment out just to address that letter and let us know that you are out there looking and out there listening to Coffee Break. Well, it's been good to be with you on another Coffee Break. And at this same time tomorrow, may the Lord bless you. That was interesting to watch my dad as he was talking about the issue of fear in mm -hmm. uh, our lives. And there's so many things that are frightening to people yeah. today. And one of the things that we see in Job is that through that book, the oldest book perhaps in the Bible, maybe mm -hmm. with the exception of Ecclesiastes, but one of the themes of Job is that no matter what happens, I will continue to trust the Lord. Yeah. And uh, trust is another word for faith. Job had faith in God. And uh, eventually he says, even if you kill me, I will still yeah. have trust in you. I will still have faith in you. Mm -hmm. Job was here in this situation. He was struggling. He was in pain. And he had some pretty rough counselors mm -hmm. that came along. And Zophar, where this, uh, this verse that Dr. Smith used today, uh, Zophar was, was that type of man. He was the type of man who just told it how he seen it. Uh, and he actually tried to kind of give a theology lesson to Job before this, he began showing him uh, how uh, he was uh, how he was totally depraved. That there was uh, sin in him from the beginning. Uh, he talked about how uh, how can you search out the deep things of God uh, and tried to teach him about God. But I wonder if Zophar really knew about God when he was uh, uh, bringing this out. Um, do we know God in a theological way where we study Him out? Or do we really just want to trust in God? And that's what Job went through. He was going through a mystery about God. By all accounts, in his theology, God shouldn't have brought all these troubles, all these calamities mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. This shouldn't have been occurring. Mm -hmm. But there's a thing about God. I like what C.S. Lewis talked about him being uh, like a lion. Mm -hmm. He's not someone that you can tame. Uh, you can't put every little dot down to how God's going to treat mm -hmm. you in whatever situation mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. and, and it's wise to fear God. But when God, and you're with God, you don't have to fear anything else, do you, mm -hmm. Don? And, you know, the, the misconception that you're talking about in Job 2, I think, mm -hmm. is that uh, his so-called comforters were coming and saying, this would not have happened to you if you had been a righteous man. Oh, you yeah. have sin in your life. You have something wrong. And that's why you're having all this suffering. Mm -hmm. And we still have that mistake going on today. The prosperity yeah. gospel preachers who mm -hmm. say, if you just have enough faith and you do these things, then God will do this. Yeah. And so it's almost like uh, uh, Job's comforters are thinking in that false way about yeah. who God is that we can control God with our behavior. So if I do all the right things and uh, follow the laws as Job had yeah. done, he was a righteous man, then uh, it's guaranteed that everything is going to be great in your life. Your kids are going to be healthy. You're going to be rich uh, as he was and so forth. Yeah. And the first part of Job's life fits that model. He's yeah. being a righteous man and everything is going his way. But then God has a bigger purpose that Job is not aware of. Mm -hmm. And God changes things. Uh, and that really is the story of our lives, too. If we are following Jesus Christ as our Savior, we can't predict whether or not we will have to go through uh, cancer or we will have to go through bankruptcy yeah. or whether we will have to go through public disgrace even. Mm -hmm. uh, and these kinds of things, God is always perfecting us, always working on us, always polishing uh, the edges to change us into people that he wants to to yeah, use absolutely that's exactly true and and today we have one of my best friends the pastor of omega baptist who is going to go through an interview with uh, don today and, and share a, a troublesome time that came into his life and how the god of glory helped him through that i hope you'll enjoy this bernie you've been a pastor for many years now yes. It's over 40. I'll just say over 40. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you're pastor at Omega Baptist. I had the yes. privilege of speaking up there a few months ago, mm -hmm. and it was a real joy. It's a great yeah. church. And you've been through some difficult times, mm -hmm. haven't you? Yes. I've been uh, through the cancer. Uh, 
I'll just say this: my father died with cancer at uh, 63. Or excuse me, 67. My mother died at 78. Uh, my brother died at 73, and then I came down with cancer. What happened to me? I had a bowel blockage, and uh, uh, they uh, they had been treating it for something else for quite a few years. But then I went to the hospital because the pain was so unbearable. One afternoon, mm -hmm. we had gone to get our grandson, got back home, and I couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. So they took me to the emergency room, and that was on the July the 15th, July the 18th. They told me that I had a bowel blockage. Cause everything I ate or drank came back up, mm. and so, and it was two types of cancers growing together, mm. you know, mm -hmm. lymphoma mm -hmm. and and another cancer. And uh, do you remember that moment uh, when they came in and said, uh, "Bernie, you've got cancer." Yeah, and yeah, and it was it was really horrifying, you know, as I stood there while well, I was laying down. My wife and I were sitting in a chair and we was talking to Doctor Shoemaker, and he came in. And Dr. Long came in mm -hmm. and said, Bernie, you have cancer, mm -hmm. you know. And, and given your family history, history. Bernie, mm -hmm. with all the cancer incidents in your immediate yeah. family, that must have felt like a death sentence. Well, it, it was. To me, it was, you know. Mm -hmm. And, of mm -hmm. course, my wife, she really teared up and just, you mm -hmm. know, her fear went into overtime like mine did. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, But uh, after getting out of the hospital and going home, and we were going to have to go see another doctor, you know, to set up, mm -hmm. start setting up the chemo treatments and things. Mm -hmm. And and we'd lay in bed at night and we'd cry. And it was like our whole systems, everything was on the edge and life was just going to end just right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to get things prepared, you know. And mm -hmm. I was trying to get things prepared for her. And I told God I didn't want to leave her, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, I didn't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. So we worried about it. And, uh. And that must have been a very dark it was. time. It and was. We shed a lot of tears for a couple of days there, I'll mm -hmm. tell you, a lot of tears. And finally, mm -hmm. we just we just put it in God's hands. I said, God, this cancer is bigger than I can. I said, I mm -hmm. can't handle it. And I said, it's yours. I give this cancer to you, you know. And mm -hmm. I told the congregation that, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, But uh, I'll just be honest with you, it was horrifying. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. after Because I knew I was a goner after seeing my dad and my mother were brother mm -hmm. and, and the history mm -hmm. of cancer in our family, mm -hmm. I knew mm -hmm. that I was goner, and the fear was unreal, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so that, that's when, that's when family really becomes important, mm -hmm. and your faith in Christ, you know, mm -hmm. really is something else, you know, mm -hmm. but once I made that decision, mm -hmm. me and my wife said, well, God, it's yours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's when everything just, you mm -hmm. know, just, uh, mm -hmm. it just smoothed out, you know. Mm -hmm. well, we're talking about today yeah. about fear and yeah. the relationship between fear and faith. Uh -huh. And that fear is really, uh, some people would say, you know, you shouldn't be fearful or you shouldn't have fear. We're going to face situations in our lives, if we're honest with ourselves, that are going to terrify right. us. They're going to scare us to death. And when we face those situations, I've thought about this almost like an alarm bell that goes off. When, when I become aware that I'm getting scared, that's God's message to me in mm -hmm. a way that I need to trust Him more. And then I need to put my faith put in more, Him. Put more faith in Him. And you uh, made a conscious decision in there, didn't you? Yeah. At some point you said... Uh, I realize I can't handle this on my own. I can't do this. I mean, I, I can't. I can't have. I can't cure this cancer. What am I going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said, God, it's yours. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I just give it to Him. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I say, you, you take it. And uh, changed me, at that point. It, you know, it not yeah. only changed my fear about that, but it changed my fear about a lot of things. You know, and and the faith, my faith began to grow in Christ right. even more than it ever had. You know? Right. Yeah. And. Uh, I guess you might say most of my life I've been a scaredy cat, but when it comes to something like this, uh -huh. it's something uh -huh. else, you know. Uh -huh. it, it, that, that's a fear you can't handle. That's right. You've got to give it to God, yeah. you know. And Second uh, Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Well, where does fear come from? It don't come from God. It comes from that's the right. devil. Right. Yeah. You know, he can yep. scare you to death. There is a spirit of yeah, fear, fear that yeah. is not from God. Right. And, and God yeah. gives us a spirit yeah. of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit and a spirit of a sound mind, you know, that's right. what God gives to us, you know. Right. But not yeah. that fear. He wants us to love him. Yeah. He don't he don't want us to be so afraid of him that we can't serve him. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what the devil wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when this yeah. cancer came along and it was getting to me and I know it was not only affecting my family, but it was affecting my church. The uh -huh. church where I was pastoring. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna tell you something. People began to pray for me. 
-hmm. it was unreal at the people I don't even know, Brother Don, different churches. Mm -hmm. You know, it just went out. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and but you know what? This built their faith too. Mm -hmm. God used mm -hmm. this this instrument, I guess, that I have was going on with me. But it it made the faith of other people grow because. It's mm -hmm. all what God did in me. Absolutely. Uh, you know. What what would you say to there undoubtedly somebody out there this morning, maybe many people yeah. that are facing a situation, yeah. Brother Bernie, in their lives, maybe like yeah. you were in, and they're still in that dark place. Maybe they don't know Jesus Christ as their savior, uh, or maybe they are Christians, yeah. but still they are mostly terrified mm -hmm. and what would you say to them i would say to a non-christian first of all give your life to jesus mm -hmm. you know and if you don't know how call someone that you've got confidence that's got a that that is a christian or pastor mm -hmm. let him take you through the plan of salvation mm -hmm. and for a christian prayer prayer is the key in our life you know mm -hmm. i mean that's how we talk to god mm -hmm. uh, i'll just give you an example there's been times i thought well i'll sit down and i'll come up with a message for sunday morning you know mm -hmm. and uh but i don't talk to god at first mm -hmm. then i begin to talk to god then the message comes right. you, know? <laughs> you know what i'm talking about yeah. you know Absolutely. And, and we all do that yeah and so you, you need to put your faith and just just believe faith is simply believing you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's all that just believe mm -hmm. in god and mm -hmm. just to God just help me, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. And, and another word for faith there is that I think of as a when I used to be yeah. a psychologist yeah. and counselor and did that work for much of my professional life yeah. before I came into ministry yeah. uh, directly with Radio Bible Hour. But I always thought about faith is is also like it's the, another word for it is just simply trust. trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and I may trust mm -hmm. each other to some degree. But as we become friends and as we spend time with each other and get to know each other, and the more we know about each other, that trust starts to grow. And it's like that with the Lord, yeah. isn't it? I mean, we, we, you and I may run into a situation that just scares us to death, but when I see... Well, Bernie was there for me when I was in, in that. He helped me get yeah. through that. And, and I start to have, say I have faith in, yeah. in Bernie. Now, our faith in God is totally different, yeah. to, different but it's, it's similar to that, isn't it? Yeah, yes. That trust is something else. Uh, uh, it's just like uh, in my congregation, you know, we have a youth minister there and, and a pastor, and, and I trust him. I mean, I could walk out of there for a week or time or a month's time, just turn it over to him. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. That's trust. But we trust our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. you know, not only to help us in times like, but to comfort us. I came up here this morning with joy in my heart, with mm -hmm. expectation. I really did, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and like preaching at a pastor's conference here a while back, and uh, I said, I thought to myself, I said, Lord, what do I tell a lot of preachers? A bunch of preachers know a whole lot more than I do. Just get up there and give God, <laughs> God the glory, you know. That's right. And you yeah. just trust. Uh -huh. It's simply yeah. trust, you know. Yeah. And, and they joy and trust. Absolutely. They just trust, you know, yeah. and joy there. And uh, I was going to tell you uh, when we met with Dr. Uh, shoemaker and uh, I had my whole family there and I had a uh, uh, niece that was uh, orthodontics and she of course she knew all the slang and how to write I understand she wrote all that like a diary down everything he said mm -hmm. but then he came to the point he said you know uh, Bernie he said, you got about 15 to 20 years yet to go. And I thought, that's natural, you know, my age, wow. you know. Yeah. And it was like a flood. It was like a flood of relief. Mm -hmm. It just lifted us, mm -hmm. left us. And, and I tell you what, my wife and I, the family, we just went home praising God, giving him yeah. praise and glory. Yeah. And I couldn't yeah. wait till I got to church the next day and just thank everybody for the prayers and what God had done, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so. Mm -hmm. I just give him the praise, the trust. Yeah, you have to have yeah. that faith and the trust, you know. Yeah, yeah. but uh, we we've thought about you know this uh, this issue, uh, talked about it a little bit on the program, mm -hmm. because it's it's really a core issue in our walk yeah. with Christ. Is are we going to be afraid? Yeah. Are we going to have the worldly fears, or are we going to have the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. uh, and faith in the Lord and and as we uh, look at these, you know, and, and the people that we've talked to on the program and the, uh, the scriptures that we examined, 
the one thing we keep understanding is that we have one thing that we can do that's pleasing to God, and that's to trust Him. Trust him. And I can I can be the wealthiest man. I could be a billionaire, and I could think that I'm going to please God mm-hmm. by giving Him everything I have. And you know, there's nothing we have that God needs, yeah. but there is one thing that God is pleased by, yeah. and that is when we're in a difficult situation, when we're Facing those worldly fears, the mm. fear for our health, the fear for our finances. We talked before the program a little bit. Sometimes we get afraid for our children mm. or our families. Uh, and yet in those worst situations, like you were sitting in that doctor's office and he, or, or lying in that bed and he says, uh, Bernie, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have cancer. And for a few days you struggle with that mm. and then... You say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Yeah. Even though it's kind of like Job, you know, yeah. Lord, even if you kill me, I'm going to trust, you. Going to yeah. trust exactly. you. And that delights yeah. the heart of God. Yeah. That makes the yeah. Lord happy. And then when the Lord is happy, he blesses us with that yeah. joy. You know, Proverbs chapter 3, 5, 6 is a great verse. It's, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding, but all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct thy paths. Right. I've seen God absolutely use that verse in my life. When my daughter had an accident one time, uh-huh. and I was going to the, I call it the graveyard for junk cars after they've been to an mm-hmm. accident mm-hmm. to retrieve some of her things out of it. Mm-hmm. And it, and God knew the burden on my heart, my wife's heart for our daughter, and laid in the hospital up at UT, and that and He brought that verse to me, mm-hmm. and it was mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. sense of relief and joy. It was the same with the cancer. We trust our. Just trust in God. Don't lean to your own understanding because mm-hmm. you don't mm-hmm. understand it. You mm-hmm. know? That's right. I couldn't understand it. Yeah. That's why I gave it to God. I said, here it is, God, you take it. <laughs> so, well, God yeah. is working yeah. in the life yeah. of every Christian yeah. out there yeah. who's watching. The Lord is working his purposes mm-hmm. in your life. Yeah right now Mm -hmm. and it may be that you have to walk through that valley the Mm -hmm. shadow of death in order to understand god's faithfulness and it may be that you go home yeah (laughs) (laughs) and and like paul said you know uh, to die is gain so uh, for the christian but but we uh, sometimes young christians really don't yet understand faith because they haven't walked through the hard times yet with Christ. And some of the uh, preaching that goes on on television out there that says, oh, the Lord will, if you just trust him enough, he'll cure your cancer, he'll uh, he'll give you all the money you want, he'll fix everything, every problem in your life. Uh, And that's not the message that Mm -hmm. we're giving this morning, I hope. I hope Uh, not to. The Lord is to be depended on and trusted, but for his purposes, not for our own. Exactly. He has a better idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you think about this, Brother Don. It's all about Jesus. It's not about us. That's right. He's yep. the creator, not us. You know, we're the created. You That's know? right. So yep. we're to worship the creator. Yeah. Give him the praise and glory. You know, yeah. say, God, here it is. You Absolutely. take it. You know, Absolutely. I can't do it. You made this old body. You know, you made every sail inside of me. Yep. I said, I can't look inside of me. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, I think of Jesus uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane as he's praying. Mm -hmm. He knows what's coming. He knows uh, in a way that nobody else, no other human being understands. He and the Father understand the sacrifice that he's about to make for us. And uh, the human part of him doesn't want to go through that. No, it doesn't. He doesn't. And the divine part finishes that prayer, though. He says, first, let that cup pass from me if you can. I don't want to drink this. Uh, That's the human part. And the divine part of him says, Lord, I submit myself to your will. Your will, not mine, be done. And and that, when we're in difficulty, I always always think about our Lord and how he prayed when he was facing Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a thing that we cannot even begin to comprehend the suffering that he was about to submit himself to. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't put to death. He was gave himself yeah, over yeah. as a sacrifice yeah. for us. And uh, when I think about bearing not only the pain and suffering and sin yeah. of me and you and all creation uh, it was born on his shoulders yeah. in that sacrifice, and yet he, even facing that, said, not my will, but thy will be done. You know, and I love, I love it there in uh, uh, St. John chapter 17. I think it's verse 4, right in there somewhere. And uh, he said, Father, I finished the work that you gave me to do. 
Well, then on Calvary's cross, right before he gave up the ghost, he said, Father, it is finished. I have finished the work. Yeah. Yeah. And he gave up the ghost. He finished yeah. what he had begun in eternity past. Yeah. He finished yeah. the work. Yeah. To make a way for God's lovely creation, which is you and I, every human being on this earth, that they would have a chance for eternal life. That's All right. they have to do is put their faith and trust in Jesus. That's faith right. and trust. Yeah. And it's, it's wonderful. And faith and trust, when you're sick with cancer and things like this, maybe, you know, I don't understand everything because the scripture says, you know, I don't understand everything. <laughs> But you can just do the best you can and hope, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that wonderful hope in mm -hmm. Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just mm -hmm. glad to be here, and mm -hmm. God's left me here for a purpose, and maybe it's to help someone else and comfort someone else. I don't know, but there's, a, there's lots of other people like me that God has left here, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Then some God chooses to bring on home, you know. Well, I have never seen a time in my life, and I'm, I'm, uh, you and I are getting pretty yeah. close to the same age. I'm yeah. catching up with you pretty fast. <laughs> but, but, but. I've never seen a time in my life in which there's so much fear mm -hmm. uh, in our society and our world today. Mm -hmm. There's there's and realistic yeah. fear yeah. Uh, for uh, about death and destruction and and all of the things that people are so frightened about. And I just think about how hard it would be to walk through this life without yeah. our constant companion. Jesus said, yeah. "You know, I'll never leave you or forsake Amen. you." He'll, yeah. And that means I will walk with you. Yeah. Even in those times that when the doctor says, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's cancer. Uh, and he's also with us in those times when the doctor says, you got another 20 years to go, Bertie. It, it, and you know, he's there with us through the thick yeah. and the thin, through the up times and the bad times, isn't he? I found him walking with me when I had that cancer. He was walking there with me. Right. And to take those treatments, you know, it's another thing, too. Right. Uh, it's, uh, and he's there with me in that chair, sitting there with me, you know. Uh -huh. Tomorrow I have to have a C-scan to make sure they got, and I, mm -hmm. I, and I still have that hope, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they'll not find anything in mm -hmm. there, you know. Mm -hmm. And if they do, God is yours. What mm -hmm. can I do, you know? Mm -hmm. I just give to the Lord, you That's know. That's right. That's all I can do. We always have a human kind of direction or idea about yeah. how we'd like to yeah. go <laughs> and and god has a purpose for us that's much bigger than we can yeah. imagine Amen. and so yeah. i just really yeah. appreciate you coming in and sharing with us brother bernie it's just been a well, blessing it's, it's to been my a joy heart. to me i'll tell you <laughs> and uh, and i just uh, yeah. thank you so yeah. much yeah. and and thank you for uh to the people who are uh watching today i know that your words of a man who's walked through yeah. this you have you're not talking theoretically you're talking experience yeah. and uh, you have shared in this situation your faith mm -hmm. in jesus christ is what made this experience Amen. ultimately Praise joyful yes yeah. absolutely and i hope that pastor bernie's faith Mm -hmm. has come across. He is a wonderful man of God, and we really appreciate his willingness to openly share about how he has been overcoming the fear and replacing that fear with faith. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for the broadcast, and I hope you'll be with us next time for another broadcast of Today with Christ. I'm Don Smith at the Radio Bible Hour, and I want to tell you about my father, J. Harold Smith's most powerful message. When he preached this message, thousands and thousands of people came to know the Lord, and many thousands more rededicated their lives. The message is God's Three Deadlines, and it discusses the limits of God's mercy. It discusses the unpardonable sin, what it means to waste away your day of grace, and what it means to live as a Christian with unrepented sin in your life, and the consequences of those things. I think you'll really enjoy it. We have it on DVD. Uh, we're making it available for a donation of $20, or you can receive it, uh, just the audio portion, on compact disc for a donation of $10. And thank you for watching.